Okay, I decided to make a short video on how to uh, download Lingo and then use Lingo to solve a linear program. So if you go to the class website and if you go to the Lindo page, uh, you'll see a download Lingo link. Uh, right here. And if we press on that, you'll see that there are both Windows, Mac, and Linux versions. Uh, so in the Windows version, you'll notice there's also a 32-bit and a 64-bit. Okay, so I've already downloaded the Linux. I should tell you that when you click on the download box, you'll end up having to give them your uh, name and uh, email. You can give them mine if you want. Uh, that's fine. And so I've already downloaded it and installed it. So if you go to the Lingo icon, it should look something like this. And now I'm going to solve uh, the diet problem in section 3.4 on page 70. So you might go ahead and open up your book to that page while you're looking at this. And that is a minimization problem. So we'll start with min. And now it's 50x1, uh, 50 times, be sure and say times x1, uh, plus 20x2, plus 30x3. I'm going to leave an x, I'm going to leave a multiplication sign off just to see if it understands that. Uh, plus 80x4, be sure and put a semicolon at the end. And now we have 400x1. I think I'm going to need the multiplication sign times x1 uh, plus 200 times x2 plus 150 times x3 plus 500 times x4 uh, greater than or equal to 500 semicolon 3x1 plus 2x2 x2 greater than or equal to 6 uh, 2x1 plus 2x2 uh, plus 4 times x3 plus 4 times x4 greater than or equal to 10 semicolon. Oops, I've got a semicolon and a multiplication sign before. Let me fill those in. Okay, and our last one. Oops, I see another one there. That should be two times. Okay. Uh, now, uh, one more is 2x1 plus 4 times x2 plus x3 uh, plus 5 times x4 greater than or equal to 8. Okay, and so now let's see if it'll solve. Solve or solve. Ah, syntax error. Yep, okay. So we do need to have a multiplication sign in there. I thought we probably would. Go ahead and fix that. And now uh, go ahead and go to the solver again. By the way, on the solver there are some options. If you take a look at the options, one option you'll see... Uh, I thought I saw it in here somewhere. Oh, general solver, maybe. Oh, there it is. Down at the bottom here. Variables assume non-negative. Variables assume non-negative. So if I didn't have that button checked, I would have to say x1 is bigger than or equal to 0, x2 is bigger than or equal to 0, and so on. Okay. So be sure that that is checked. Again, that was under Options and General Solver. Okay, so now if we go to the solver, just hit Solve, <coughs> and hopefully things work. So in the solution report, you're going to see the uh, optimum, which is 90. Um, let's see, down below here, if you scroll down, you'll see all the values that, of our variables. Okay, so in terms of our values here, x1 is 0, x4 is 0, x2 is 3, and x3 is 1. We're going to talk about what all these other things mean later on, the dual price, slack or surplus, reduced cost. 
So don't worry about those right now. But that gives you your solution. Alright, so that is the end of problem number one in Lingo.